This news update is brought to you by I won For me To me For me uh, uh. Yes. You don't need speakers, right? Upgrade to win every week with Line. Sign up for Line TV or broadband or purchase an iPhone 6 or Samsung Note 4. Upgrade Christmas with Lime. Welcome to the Barbados Day Even Update for Friday, December 5th, 2014. I'm Kemar Jordan. Thanks for joining us. We begin with a fresh word of warning from doctors to this island's hospital authorities. It is that history must not be allowed to repeat itself at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Following a recent shortage of emergency medical supplies at the state run healthcare institution, the Barbados Medical Association of Medical Practitioners, that's the BAMP, issued a stern warning this afternoon, even as it gave a solemn assurance that its members would be treating non urgent medical cases again. However, the doctors who gave, have been treating emergency cases only since last week further cautioned the authorities that they will take measured and appropriate action in the public's interest whenever the need arises. Today's statement follows one issued by the Ministry of Health last evening, in which the Health Minister John Boy sought to assure the doctors that negotiations for a 25 million financial injection for the Castrap Hospital are at an advanced stage. However, doctors say there is need for a sustainable, medium and long-term solution to the hospital's problems. In other news, it may not have the blessing of regulators and consumers just yet. But shareholders in the cable and wireless communications have given the thumbs up to the recent merger with Columbus. Following the company's announcement of the November 6 transaction, shareholders today attended a general meeting in London where they voted overwhelmingly to approve the mega deal. CWC's chairman, Sir Richard Lapthorne, says today's approval will significantly enhance the company's growth profile and accelerate its strategic goals. Meantime, the full trial in the police promotions case is due to get off the ground early in the new year. This from Queen's Counsel Ralph Thorne, who's representing 14 of the 15 police officers suing the local police services commission for excluding them from promotions two years ago. Today, the parties met in the high court chambers and in another pre-trial session. This was adjourned until next Friday. The court has already ruled against any further appointments or promotions in the force until the current case is determined. Despite that decision, the PSC recently approved the recommendations of the acting police chief, Tyrone Griffith, for the appointment of a number of officers to temporary acting positions. Those officers who are currently contesting the early exemptions were, however, left out. Well, it's the season for prize giving, and to that end, Graydon Seeley Secondary School held its annual speech day today. New principal Beverly Bancroft took over leadership of the school in September from the former principal Matthew Farley. And she says she's on a mission to make the institution the number one choice for students and parents. There will be a further development of the literacy program and a resource room for remediation in both mathematics and English. Too many students are moving on without being able to read. If they can do so, they will perform. The Skills for the Future grant has already started this process. Some students need to be taught differently and therefore programs to be developed so as to cater to their individual needs. Therefore, we will use IEP, Independent Education Plans, will be introduced and made full use of so as to help those students. Well, it was speech day at the Alexandra School in the North. Yes, the great school in the North. That's where the Education Minister Ronald Jones expressed happiness with what he described as the peaceful environment at the St. Peter's School. Last year, teachers and the former principal Jeff Brooms, you'll remember, were embroiled in a dispute which led to a national commission of inquiry and Brooms' transfer. I want to encourage you to work with us as we were working. I'm pleased with what I've seen. I'm pleased with what I've heard. I like the peace. I love the peace which is down here at Alexander. I want that peace to be at every school, including the one in the public. I want that peace at every school. There is no peace I can 
And speaking of Jeff Brooms, the current principal of the Parkinson Secondary School, he's announced the launch of the Parkinson Secondary School Support Fund in his name. The annual award of $5,000 will assist students at the school. He made that announcement at Parkinson's speech day earlier this afternoon. And there's more good news, this time for the Barbados Vagrant and Homeless Association. Today, they received a cash donation from the Barbados Consulate in New York. Council General Dr. Donna Hunt Cox delivered a check in person to the head of the association, Kimar Safari. The members of the Barbados diaspora in New York and the Consulate General of Barbados at New York felt it necessary at this time to share with persons who are less fortunate than ourselves. We wanted to make a contribution to a charity and we felt that at this time that this charity, the Barbados Vagrants and Homeless Society, was the ideal charity that we wanted to contribute to. And accepting the money donation, Safri tells Barbados today, it will go a long way in helping the association's Christmas drive. It's, it's a good thing it's coming at this time because we have a massive event on the 13th of this month in Queen's Park. We will be giving away food, clothing, um, HIV testing, diabetes testing, blood pressure to the homeless. Um, we'll be giving them food, clothing, um, counseling on the spot, so um, it will come in handy to help prepare for that day um, where we know a number of our clients do turn out for that. Um, and obviously Christmas time everybody is looking for a gift um, and it's when we close off um, the year with, with a buying. In sports now, some not so good news today. Barbadian batsman Omar Phillips was rushed to hospital in St. Vincent after he was struck in the head with a cricket ball. The incident occurred at the Arnest Vale Cricket Ground in St. Vincent, where the Barbados Pride are currently playing against the Windward Volcanoes. According to reports, Phillips was at the non-striker's end when he was struck by a ball, which was hit by teammate Shea Hope. He reportedly dropped to the ground, where he remained unconscious for a period of time before emergency personnel rushed him to the hospital. When Barbados today contacted the player's, the player's mom, Joanne, just before 1 p.m. today, she, however, confirmed that she had received a telephone call from her son a short while ago to say he was feeling much better and that he was awaiting a CT scan. Will we wish him a full and speedy recovery? There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bag. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like cold. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. On the regional scene, Eastern Caribbean telecommunications ministers are worried about the merger of Cable & Wireless and Columbus International. Remember, early in the newscast, we told you that Cable & Wireless shareholders have given the thumbs up to that deal. Well, the ministers who met for talks on the merger in St. Lucia yesterday believe the move will create a monopoly in fixed line services in the subregion and they've cautioned that the rights of consumers must be safeguarded. The ministers have therefore agreed to join with the Telecommunications Authority of Trinidad and Tobago in carrying out an analysis of the decision. Internationally, residents in the Philippines were today stocking up on essential supplies at the rush preparations for another potentially catastrophic storm. The super typhoon, known locally as Ruby, is expected to make landfall tomorrow evening. In Tacloban, some coastal communities have evacuated to sturdier shelters. And local officials are looking at 28 schools and buildings to accommodate more. The government has 100,000 bags of food stored in Manila, ready for any emergency. But in an archipelago of over 7,000 islands, the challenge is hauling them where they are needed. The police and the military say they are ready to respond having learned new techniques and protocols in the past year. And that CNN report brings us to the end of this week's update. We'll be back again on Monday morning. But until then, remember to log on to www.barbadostoday.bb. Subscribe to our e-paper for our email updates. And like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals or on Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also, tune in to Channel 101 on Lime TV. For all the very latest news and sports, I'm Kmar Jordan. Have a fabulous weekend and we'll see you back on Monday. And to all my Alexander people, per Ajua Astra. See you. This news update is brought to you by... You got
You're feeling lucky, you could win some money. I'm grateful for Christmas. $200,000 in cash and prizes. With Lime, you could win some money. Okay. It's Lime's Christmas Lottery. 250 winners this Christmas, oh yeah. Sign up for upgrades to super fast broadband, Lime TV, e billing, a data plan. Top up $15. Purchase a handset or text 4263 to enter. I'm grateful for Christmas. 